Hi everyone, this is Glenn Flaherty from Board Games of Bourbon, and today I want to talk about a game that I think is so good. A game that I, I can't believe wasn't uh, regaled everywhere. Uh, not only as a multiplayer experience, but as a solo experience. And that is Hit Zero by Martin Wallace. Now, bear with me. Um, I want to give you all the reasons why it is a pleasure on so many different levels. Okay, first, shout out. I got this game from Labyrinth Games in DC. Got it for like 15 bucks on a sale. Um, and it's interesting because I've seen it on sale a bunch of places. I saw it at Barnes & Noble on sale uh, and a few different places. I don't know why this game is fantastic. So the premise of the game is that um, some kid in the post-apocalyptic future was, uh, or this zombie thing, was assembling parts to make his own game. Um, he cobbled this together and uh, he presents this to you. The game itself uh, presents the experience of um, almost being like a uh, one of those horror drama movies where everyone cuts off their nose to spite their face and they're all fighting with each other and screwing each other over to, to, to say, I'm out of here, and they grab the keys to get in the car. But from here to the car, you know, the serial killer kills them. So they really, it was all for naught. And so um, the game gets really, really tight. And it can get pretty tense. And you don't know if you're going to make it. There's combat. Um, there's uh, essentially dueling with another person in form of um, auctioning. That's m much cooler than just saying aux auctioning. It's not like a power grid type auctioning, really. And um, the tactile experience is so fantastic. So I have it in front of me. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So, okay, so first of all, the box itself is made to look like y you are walking into this world. The, the box itself is, is weather grained and worn and a lot of cross outs. Actually, when I bought the game, the guy thought the box was all written all over. Mm. And the box is made to look like this blood smeared old container. Once you open it, the rule book looks like the guy did it on, a, I don't know if you can see that, looks like he did it on graph paper. And it has little drawings about how to play. Um, once you get into the components itself, um, some of the components are made on car keys. Just just to say like plus one and plus two, but these are just car keys. And they're on the board and they're thick and they're sturdy, man. I swear my Nissan Sentra came with things not that sturdy. The game pieces are made to look like they're found bottle caps. And the bottle caps themselves have these hard ridges and they really feel cool like you're dealing with like little bottle caps. The player markers that you're trying to do are all little found things like uh, player number one. Player number one has like one of those little cards you uh, mark off to get like a free hamburger. Um, this one over here, this is pretty cool. Number three, that's a business card with like a, a tag on the back that you slip to get into places. Uh, personally, I love this one, the hello my name is number two and on the back there's little pins you can put in your shirt. It's all these little details that make it really come alive. Um, the game itself comes with a bunch of wooden parts, and it comes with um, die. Let's see if I can hold that up there. The, the die themselves are wooden, and so you have this great feel. I love like in Jamaica when you're playing with the dice, and you have this great tactile feel. Um, you get zombies in here, the undead walking towards you. Uh, fantastic um, and then the really the only thing that's left is the uh, game board where you are basically um, auctioning to take a path in the game the way the game works is the following you're gonna have this big old deck of cards so let me open this to show you and there's gonna be pathways pathways are two cards each so you may get a card like this in the game and what this card means is that you're going to get some bullets. These are little bullet symbols. You're going to get little bullets, and then something down here takes effect, and then you got to fight these guys. You spend bullets to uh, pick off the zombies from far away. If you don't kill enough zombies from far away, you have to do hand-to-hand -hand combat. And what happens is when you do the hand-to-hand -hand combat, let me find those dice again, uh, you might have to either spend, uh, first of all, nothing might happen, 
Uh, you might have shot somebody with your gun. That's great. Um, you might have uh, been attacked and to survive, you have to spend something that's uh, like adrenaline, but it's basically like energon, you know, little lightning bolt there. And you get all these possibilities. Uh, things are really tough. You move to the red die, and the red die are less forgiving. And you're trying to make it through the cards. Now, as the game goes on, um, you don't simply just pick what cards you do, because some pairs of cards might be really, really tough. You'll, you'll want to bid to get on that card. So you might say, Ugh, I can't survive the hard path. I need to go on that easy path. Um, I'm going to pay two resources, which are your guns and your health and everything like that, to go on that path. It says, no, I need to go there. So you're battling with each other to go down the easiest path and to escape, while the other people are forced to the edges and might have to take harder paths. And uh, that's a really cool stress building because uh, element because right at the end, there's not enough resources and you're probably going to die. Another thing, some of the cars are actually interactive. You need to put two things together to make a power work. Like in the game, there are these other tokens. If you get this thing that's a steering wheel, this means you can take control of a bus and drive it, and you'll never have to use the really unforgiving dice in the game. It's like you're using the, the bus as the executioner. It's killing everything for you. And you need to pair that with a card that allows you to put the steering wheel on it, right? That's the bus card. So when your cards are coming out that you're bidding on, you might be like, man, I need to get on that bus. I'm going to pay the most to get that. But it's the yin and yang man because he spent a lot of your money on the auction, you're gonna have less, less resources to actually help you battle your way through the cards because your remaining um, resources after the auction, you spend to get dice, to do rerolls, your adrenaline to fight off a guy. So it gets really, really pressured. This game is so easy to understand. This booklet is so easy. One of the easiest, most intuitive books I've ever dealt with. Very well written. I understood it on the first try. That's how you know it's easy. Uh, setup it takes like no setup, and it is just a blast. The the quality. Now here's another quality in this that every detail in this is great and thought out. Okay, the cards themselves. They're just like the box was made to look like it was left behind. Look at the cards. These are the scenarios, but because it was a kid putting it together, it's on the back of like playing cards. Um, other cards are made from like, like Seven Wonders. Some of the cards are made from Ticket to Ride. This card I think is from CIA versus KGB, which I actually own. And some of the cards are made from um, Dixit cards. It's just like hobbled together. Other and they're all dirty, like they've just been abandoned. Diner, you know, little menu cards. Oh my goodness, it's so many. Now on the other side of these, some of the cards you only play if you have like a certain amount of players. So how do they indicate that you're not going to use them? Let me see if I can find an example. Well, the way you do that is if you look at the card, it'll have a little symbol like a playing card in the corner. And those are the cards you leave out at certain counts. But guess what? That's so thematic. Even the way they tell you how to not include a card in the game is thematic. Man, this game really has it going on. I can't rave about this enough. A real joy, a real great find for me. So. Once again, uh, if you're looking for a solo game, I really enjoyed it solo because there's a mechanism where the way the game that plays out is you can play four people, but as people die, um, the cost of all the paths become more expensive. And so it gets more expensive with three, it gets more expensive with two. You basically are just playing it like there's like a three paths and one of them is very expensive. And um, it, it uh, some of the cards you don't see. When you play solo, the cards are flipped down, so you don't know what you're going to. One of the passes, one down, one up. So you sort of know. And the most expensive one that has one of those keys that adds cost, that you fully know what you're doing. So, okay, so that's Hit Zero by Martin Wallace. Wow, love this game. I think you will too. I gotta say, I think this is a, a, a should buy. Played it maybe 11, 12 times. And uh, everyone has really enjoyed it. I'm thrilled with it. Give it a shot. All right, guys, thanks so much. Talk to you soon. Bye.